This morning we've got a couple Troy Belt push mowers. Customer brought them in and said that they won't start. Now this is his mower and his son's mower. They look a little bit short as far as the handle goes. We were checking them out here. Went to go ahead and check the oil obviously in both of them. Both of the oil levels are good. They've both got gas in them. The gas doesn't look real bad in either one of them. Looks maybe a little bit a little bit yellowish, but pretty clear. Doesn't smell real bad. Went to do a little bit further testing. Now this one looks like it has a little bit of oil on the bottom, and this one looks like it's got a little bit of, I don't know, maybe some melting or something going on. Maybe a blown exhaust gasket or head gasket where it's getting hot. We'll diagnose that maybe a little bit later, but just trying to figure out first off why these things won't start. I went to give it a give it a pull. And that's what I get. Solid locked up. Now that's strange. It's got plenty of oil and everything in it. Flip it up. What do we see? We see the blade is hitting on the handle that's all the way through to the blade now this handle is the same height as the other handle so let's flip it over and see what it looks like on the other side this morning we've got a couple Troy belt push mowers customer brought them in and said that they won't start now this is his mower and his son's mower. They look a little bit short as far as the handle goes. We were checking them out here, went to go ahead and check the oil obviously in both of them. Both of the oil levels are good. They've both got gas in them. The gas doesn't look real bad in either one of them. Looks maybe a little bit, a little bit yellowish, but pretty clear, doesn't smell real bad. Went to do a little bit further testing. Now this one looks like it has a little bit of oil on the bottom and this one looks like it's got a little bit of, I don't know, maybe some melting or something going on. Maybe a blown exhaust gasket or head gasket where it's getting hot. We'll diagnose that maybe a little bit later, but just trying to figure out first off why these things won't start. I went to give it a, give it a pull. That's what I get. Solid locked up. Well, that's strange. It's got plenty of oil and everything in it. Flip it up. What do we see? We see that the blade is hitting on the handle that's all the way through to the blade now this handle is the same height as the other handle so let's flip it over and see what it looks like on the other side same deal hitting right at the handle it's pushed all the way down through. So what they've done is they've installed these in the improper place. And I don't know if it was just because he wanted the handle at that height um, for both of them, or they thought that's where it should go. But basically at this point, and I've seen this happen a lot of times with different instances where these pieces here, these... Um, bolts that go down through and thread into a nut that sits down in the bottom i've seen these not be in here and the whole handle push down through not exactly causing this issue before but i mean i don't know maybe this was just something that happened as he was unloading them from the car maybe it's not maybe that's not the reason that they're not starting 
I'm gonna find out here shortly. Just pulled this handle up, and it just slides into. There's a there's a hole up a little bit further in the handle. I don't know, about a foot maybe. Get that tightened up. Let's see if this thing does any better at that point. Well, that's good. At least it wasn't maybe an issue just of that. Give it a squirt of carb cleaner real quick and see. So that one starts right up on carburetor cleaner and dies out smokes a good amount there's a good amount of oil in it and everything most likely a carb issue we'll get that one cleaned up and then let's see what the other one's looking like Definitely a little bit smoky on that one. Now I thought this was just gonna be a nice, simple, easy, hey, guy forgot to put his handle or installed his handles in the wrong spot. Apparently it wasn't that nice and quick and easy and funny, but <laughs> do see that occasionally. A lot of times these are quite a bit harder to move up and down. You can use a a uh, dead blow hammer from the inside or something like that if you want you want to make sure you get these plenty tight if you don't down in there they'll loosen right back out and fall out while you're mowing you won't even notice it and you'll end up pushing them down into the blade anyway seen that quite a few times that one doesn't have a lot of gas in it but we're still going to give it a whirl see if it fires up Fired right up just for a split second. Thinking probably on this one we're dealing with a carb issue too. Just because it fired up there for, for a second. A lot of times as soon as that, it's got an auto choke on it. So as soon as that, When the choke opens, it'll die out. That's what happens a lot of time on these. We're gonna clean these carburetors up, get these things back and going. The first one here has the Briggs and Stratton. That's the 725EX, 190cc on it. Takes a few 5.16 bolts out of the front to get to the carburetor. Just three of them, they're all the same size. And then the front just pulls straight off. Now there is a little nipple back here for the breather. You can either take that all off together or you can leave it on there. And it just sits like that. So the smaller part is towards the filter and the longer parts up towards the breather. Now on here we have a quarter inch screw that sits straight down through the bottom. So it comes from here down. We use just a quarter inch ratcheting wrench to loosen it. Now do note there is a spring right here. So this spring pulls this back, this whole lever. So you don't want to lose that when this comes off. I usually don't take it off first, but if, if it goes flying, you want to pay attention to where it goes. A lot of times I just take that and I'll kind of move it towards the back. And I'll still have a little spring tension, but it just kind of sits out of the way. I like to grab my pliers. Grab the fuel line clamp. And then grab the fuel line and just twist. So if I grab it and twist like this, that kind of just breaks it free. Depending on what kind of pliers you're using at that point, I like to use the needle nose and just kind of 
pry it off of there. Good to go. Now you want to get something to drain that into. I don't think I have anything real handy. Now that fuel, since I don't know where it goes, I'm definitely going to drain it. I'm going to refill it once we're done cleaning the carburetor with some good ethanol free fuel. Now the reason we're cleaning these carburetors is because they run on carburetor cleaner, but will not stay running. Both of them do. Probably means they have a little bit of moisture or just some varnished fuel in them. A lot of times when they come from the same place, it is the same fuel source, but it's hard telling for sure. Maybe the son borrowed the father's or father borrowed the son. Whichever way. Now these are just two 3 8 bolts that sit th straight through there. That hold the carburetor on. That's what we're going for next. And then the carburetor just kind of hangs there from the linkage to the governor. Now at this point, what you'll want to do is you want to just pull it straight down and pull it over and out. So that linkage goes in like this and then sits up like that. So you got to work it out that way. Now that's pretty yellow coming out. We'll open this thing up. That looks pretty bad. See how it is on the inside. We also have a gasket back here. This is the intake gasket. It's just an O-ring that sits around there. It's pretty flat. We'll put a new one of those on there as we do this. Grab a towel and we'll take this thing apart. I believe it just takes a 13 on the bottom. Yep. 13 on the bottom to get the bowl off of it. Let's see what we got. Yep, so there's quite a bit of stuff in the bottom. Where is that all goes now as I'm looking at the needle in the seat it's staying up so as it's going down it's not sitting level so that means the needle in the seat in here is kind of puckered up now if it's doing that what will happen is with the way this bowl sits it will not open far enough to allow enough fuel through there because it's because it starts sealing at that point you know right about there it's not level it should seal all the way level that's when it should be sealed not way down here where this one is in this case you're going to want to replace the needle in the seat that's down in here because it's puckered so you can take that out of there and replace it on these uh needle in the seats i don't know they sell the bowl kit with the gasket uh, and everything well this one might not need a bowl kit but either way Needle and seat, you know, eight or 10 bucks. Uh, I've got brand new aftermarket carburetors for 15. Come with the whole kit and everything like that. Give the customer the option, uh, see what he wants to go with. But if I had to guess on this one, we're probably gonna end up replacing the carburetor. Let's move on to the next one real quick and see what we have going on with it. Now this one's got the Briggs and Stratton. It's got a plastic carburetor on it. Uh, got a few different different designs and things uh, than the one we just took apart. Now you'll need an eight millimeter and then a seven millimeter for this one. Now finding your seven millimeter sometimes is a problem. There it is. Oh, I've actually already got it over here on this. I forgot all about that. Oops. Get a little bit more light in here if we can. Oops. It's better. So the 7 16th ones are on the outside on this engine. Just take those off. And I'm sorry, those are the 5 16th ones on the outside. The 7 the seven millimeter ones 
one on the inside. So those are the two on the inside, these are the two on the outside. You don't want to mix those up. Then this whole assembly just pulls straight off and out. Now do note there's a nipple here for your breather just like there was on the other one. It kind of just sits there out of the way though. No need to do anything with it. <clears throat> if it comes off with your piece here though, no big deal, it just shoves back in on that side. Now here we've got just a fuel line clamp again. Pull it off. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna twist just like I did on the other one. Try to just break that seal on that fuel line. Once you do that, it just makes it a lot easier to pull off of there. If you don't do that, <clears throat> uh, what'll happen a lot of times is you'll end up ripping the fuel line because it's stuck on in one spot or another. And that was pretty yellow. This one had a lot more fuel in it than the other one. I'm just gonna grab it with the needle nose. Off we go. From there, you can pull the whole assembly out. Pull it straight out towards you. And then it tips straight forward to get this linkage here out. Once it's tipped straight forward, that comes out. And then you tip it straight to the side and the other linkage comes out. Now there is a O-ring and a little piece here. Now this is an aftermarket carburetor, I can tell because this piece is black. No big deal, the aftermarket seem to work pretty well, but we'll open it up and see what's inside. So the bolts on the bottom are also seven millimeter bolts. to open the carburetor up. Just pull those out. And I like to use my needle nose here also. And just kinda twist. Oh man, and that's that's really, really bad there. Really bad stuff, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bunch of little white flecks all down in the bottom. I mean, it's just horrible. That thing's not too bad. We're gonna take it completely apart and throw it in the ultrasonic for a little while. That should clean it all up. Now that piece usually comes out together, a lot of times anyway. You can pull it out like that. If not, you just reach right down in. When it goes back together, it goes back together like that. Now while this is apart, if it doesn't come out apart, you'll wanna pull it apart. And you wanna clean all these jets down through here. Everywhere should be clean in this thing. Now be careful that these brass don't fall out. You want those brass to stay in there. Sometimes there's a brass over here, or I'm sorry, sometimes there's a, I don't know, it seems like sometimes they have different amounts of brass, but one has a main jet here and then another one here. Clean all that out. A lot of times we use just a piece of a wire brush loom. So if you got a wire brush, you can just kind of pull a loom out of it. And then you can use that to clean down in all these little orifices. Now we're gonna actually put it in an ultrasonic cleaner, which is a little bit different, but I'm gonna take that out, pull it straight out. Now there's your pin, that just holds your float. And then you've got your needle, and that just slides down in and sits kind of right there. You wanna make sure that's all cleaned up as far as the seat goes and everything all down through here is all 100% cleaned up. Now this looks like, I don't know if that just slipped off now or if that was off before, but Either way, I want to get that back on there before we get it back together. Let's go throw this stuff in the ultrasonic. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and give the customer a call and see where they're at as far as the other one goes. If they want us to put a needle and seat in it or to replace the carb. Now again, it doesn't matter either way to me how they want to do it. But a lot of times anymore people are opting just to replace aftermarket carbs have came a long way um really no reason in my mind not to do it we'll let that clean up for about five ten minutes and check with the customer go from there we're out of the cleaner now and just spray it off with Carb cleaner. Now we use gum out carbon choke cleaner. Spray all down through all of these different orifices. 
all down through everywhere get the float nice and clean bowl see all that stuff still down in there still a bunch of white pieces if you don't get all that out of there all that's going to do is get right back in that jet and clog you up and not let you run again now again make sure that this jet here is completely clear you should be able to see down through there a perfect circle in the middle if there's any green gum anywhere around the outside or anything like that there or also in this jet you want to make sure to clean that out all of this up through here shouldn't have any sort of debris in it whatsoever these holes they should be straight throughs and down through here you want to spray carb cleaner in there also this one looks halfway decent now if you're using compressed air you do want to be careful you can lose these jets sometimes they'll fly out so just be mindful of that as you're doing it put that back together both of these are nice and clear <laughs> looks like I got a piece there we go pull this out And a lot of this is too, you want to dissipate all that water if you put it in an ultrasonic. If you didn't, you just want to make sure you clean this real well with the carburetor cleaner. Now that's how the needle just slides right in from the side, like such. And then we can put it in right here and then let it down. Well, it didn't go together real well. I guess it's a little bit easier on these sometimes to put the whole thing in like such and then when you put it together you just kind of push everything down and it pops in now you can test this by using a vacuum gauge here when it's up it should seal or you can use your mouth to kind of suck on it and make sure that it shuts it off now we want to get the emulsion tube back up in there if you look down in there's a piece there's a spot where it's the plastic is raised. Now that's where the O-ring goes. So it pops in just like such. The jet goes towards the front, towards the choke. And then as you line it up, you want that piece to line up here. And that just pops back together. And then you've got your two larger screws are the ones that go in the bottom of the bowl. And these smaller ones are the ones that go in the front that connect to the carburetor. Okay, got that all set. Now we're going to clean out this tank. Just finish cleaning it. I didn't do a whole lot to it before, but you want to make sure that it's all not wanting to stay up there for some reason. Want to make sure that it's all cleared out. There's no more fuel in it, especially since we don't know where that came from and it wasn't good fuel. <laughs> cleaner to dry it out if you got any water residual in there or anything like that. You can use to dissipate the water out. You can also take the fuel line at the bottom off and go ahead and blow backwards through it and clear it up. Get the rest of that cleaned out. Now we're going to reinstall the carb. Just goes on here. Governor linkage. You want to make sure that that O-ring's intact and everything's installed down in here. This piece does come out. It's kind of hard to take out there, but the plastic piece comes out and then there's an O-ring. It is installed correctly here. And then for the auto choke, you'll flip it forward. And the little tab goes in. Let me see if I can get a little better light and view. Let's see, 
tip it forward, little tab goes in. So now everything's hooked up right. This should be on this side, should not be on the other side. Spring intact. And this piece can come pop off to the right also, so make sure it's kind of snapped in and everything should move freely. Then you just push it straight back to go on that O-ring. Now we're to the point where we can get our fuel line back on. Get my other pliers to get the clamp. Makes it nice and easy. Go ahead and put our cover back on at this point. And you want to make sure that this goes on your breather in the back as you're putting it all together. Just line everything up. I don't want it to be difficult right this second for me for some reason. Not sure why. And there we go. Then you just put your screws back in. Filter in our cover and we'll get a little bit of gas in there. Looks like we've still got a little bit of wetness to the top of the fuel cap. Now we use ethanol free treated fuel. We treat it with Phaser 3000. Seems to be the only thing around we know of that treats the ethanol and phase separation. A few people out there seem to think there's a couple other things. We may do a test on that coming up sometime soon. All right, so everything should be good to go here. Nothing in underneath it. starting for some reason. running quite right with that carburetor on it for some reason i think what i'm gonna do i think i've got another one over here i'll just go ahead and flip it out too just crazy a lot of times on some of these how finicky they are with the things that uh, we work on it's not the right one This is a 593261 we're putting in it. Now this is one without a primer or anything, so I'll show you how to move that over to the other side. Take these back out. Just 
goes to show you sometimes doesn't matter how good you clean the car or any of that stuff things don't like to work right and I knocked that off when I was messing with the choke but I was opening it up manually and it still wasn't running right at all uh, it was on there originally though when I put it back together You gotta love these little plastic car jobby dudes. Okay, that's all off of there, so. What we have to do to switch all that over is take this out of the front. I'm gonna take this up out of the top. Basically, going to switch all this stuff over to the other side. Works good. You got to there is a stop for the <clears throat> throttle there also make sure that moves freely if you take that into account <clears throat> this gasket's still good no problem with it we'll stand in the other one real well there we go so that's all set now we're going to take this primer piece out put this piece in instead it just snaps right in and we've got the spring back to the other piece and then we've got the piece here that I knocked off when I was messing with the rest of it so that's gonna go right back here and that should be the way that it looks see there's a that one's different a little bit as far as the color goes let's put this back on here Perfect. Now, just our cover bolts back in. I guess I've showed you how on this one to clean it and put it back together. <laughs> and how to replace it, both. Depending on which way you need to go. Let's see how this thing runs now that we have a new carburetor some new fuel in it and everything all set going on there needed a new carburetor this one here customer said go ahead and replace the carb on it's a 799 866 I went ahead and sprayed off the base and everything while we were off camera just got all the dirt and everything off of it it's the intake gasket if it doesn't come with uh, for a replacement carb for you you can get an 022-644 
dash zero. That's the one from Oregon. And it's a little bit tight around this dip in the middle. Not sure why, but they seem to work pretty well on these. So we're gonna put that in just like such and go straight up. Then we're gonna attach it at the back side. Just push it straight on. Now on this, I did not finish cleaning that tank out. We're gonna do that here as soon as we tighten this carburetor down. Doesn't really matter when you do it, but it definitely needs to be done. I'm gonna get my 3 8 back out. Go ahead and tighten my two. Until you're familiar with something like this and what you're doing, I'd tighten them down both evenly. Don't tighten them down at once. Now with this, we went backwards a little bit for the wind vane. We took that and we went just backwards a tiny bit. So we want to pull that kind of to the right and straight out and then level it up. Now as you're tightening it down, you should be able to move it back and forth once it gets started tightening down there. If you can't do that, you know you have something wrong in here and you've got to address that before you try to go any further. Otherwise your auto choke is not going to work. Tighten that down, it should still work. Now we're going to throw the fuel line on as soon as we get the rest of this drain. See how much is still in there? Quite a bit. We'll just blow it out. Over here. Now I like to use the carb cleaner a lot. It seems to work well. It's just kind of flushing everything out of there. On this one, it kind of has a spot back in the corner where everything likes to gather. Yeah, see all that stuff coming up out of there? It's a bunch of stuff either in their fuel or getting down into their tanks at some point, somehow. Looks like we're good to go now. All dried out. Put that fuel line back on. Now, if you aren't replacing the carburetor and you need to clean it, I'll show you how to do that at this point the carburetor here essentially we took it apart your main part of this is going to be your emulsion tube going straight down through you can clean that out real well with a piece of a wire loom kind of like i showed you on that other one anything that'll get down in there clean out where your needle and seat is especially if you're replacing the needle and seat or if you're having issues with it see all around here there's all that debris clean all that up uh, make sure that there's no debris stuck in your needle and seat or down in your emulsion tube. And then the most important is actually in the jet in the bottom. Through both of these sides and also down through the middle. If that's not 100% clean, your engine will not run right and it will surge. Also, you want to make sure your float doesn't have any fuel in it or anything. If it's got anything on the inside, it's obviously not going to float. Needle should be completely clean here. Nothing stuck on it or anything. No pitting. If you see any pitting or anything like that. You want to replace it and everything should move freely on this side now you will want to go ahead and put a new gasket on the front also as we replace it all right and again this piece for our breather just like such and we'll put it on line everything up and then we'll put our three bolts right back in the front I gotta get my 5 16ths back on there real quick. Now the fuel filters and everything on these look pretty good. I just, I wonder if they just don't know what kind of gas to use and they're just using regular pump fuel and just running into those issues like everybody does when they are using pump fuel. Just common like everybody knows. Okay, throw that on. Get a little bit of fuel and we'll fire this thing up.
sometimes when you think it's as simple as somebody not knowing exactly what they're doing ends up being something a little more difficult like bad fuel in both of them as opposed to just a handle blocking them from pulling it so hopefully that gives you a little bit of info on how to clean the carbs or replace them on these thanks for watching like and subscribe